Hello! I am Matt Shoemaker, the designer of V-Lives We Will Only Know Summer. This week we are going to talk about swarming. Swarming in the game is one of the main ways that you can earn victory points, where you earn five for swarming in the springtime, three for swarming in the summer, and one in the fall. Swarming is a natural activity that bees take. It is how they reproduce. Uh, when a hive swarms, uh, half of the bees leave and go and find and form a new hive elsewhere. Uh, in the game, this takes the form of either you being able to leave and form a new hive elsewhere, or you can spawn a wild hive that is controlled by an AI that will compete with everybody for resources and attempt to rob them of their honey. I hope you enjoy this video, and please, as always, let me know if there's anything else you'd like to know about the game in the comments below. Swarming is one of the primary ways to gain points in Bee Lives We Will Only Know Summer. There are several reasons why you'd want to swarm. The main one is to score victory points. If you swarm in the springtime, you gain five victory points, three if you do it in the summer, and one victory point if you do this in the fall. The reason these points are structured this way is because the hives are less likely to survive uh, the later in the year that you swarm because they will have less chances to build up supplies in the winter and the less likely they are to survive against other competing hives when competing for resources. In the game there are two ways that you can swarm. Here we have a hive set up uh, previously um, just for example purposes. It has seven on the disease track it has 14 wax, as you can see by this hand icon on the 14 space there. And it currently has several honey and pollen resources and nine workers. Now, the first way you swarm, in the most common way that you will do it, is by having more workers than half of your total wax rounded up. So in this case, we have 14 wax. That means we could support up to seven workers. Now we have nine workers, so what this means is that half of them rounded down, so four of them will leave the hive, and they will take half of the honey resources with them. In this case, there are eight cubes, so they will take four of those cubes with them. If it was an odd number, they would take a half of them rounded down, and they will form a new hive. Now the other way to swarm is to fill up your wax completely. If the uh, bees do not have any way to leave room for making brood, then they will swarm. So you would then, if you had this in the case where every single uh, wax that you had was full, uh, regardless of having too many bees or not, you are going to swarm no matter what. So let's say we had four bees left in this hive, even though they have room for up to seven, Half of them are going to leave and take half of the honey with them and form a new hive on their own. When you swarm, you have two options, uh, which I'll cover with the map in a second. But one last thing to do with the hive is that you are going to place a skip brood token on your brood marker on your queen. This is a reminder that you will not hatch any new bees in the next turn. And uh, you have two options, depending on if you stay in your location or change your location for your disease. If you stay in your location, your disease is reduced by half, rounded down, so in this case, three points. If you choose to go to a new location, then your disease marker would be reduced to zero, and in this case, taken off of the board. Now, on the map here, let us pretend we are this triangle player here. If you were swarming, you would place a wild hive within the range of your hive. The range of hives is always within three tiles of you. So generally, you are going to want the uh, hive, which will not be under your control, but under an AI in the game, to be within three squares of your opponent and as far away from you as possible. So here we would probably want to put it one, two, three, or one, two, three, either way, away. Now you have another option when you're placing a hive, and that is instead of simply placing it there, you may be the, hive, the bees that leave the hive, in which case you would choose somewhere, let's say you want to get further away from your opponents, 
and you would move your hive there, and your old hive would become the wild hive in that case. Either way, you are going to be uh, now competing with them for resources. They may rob you, you may rob them. Um, the wild hive takes on a strength equal to the number of bees that left your hive. So in that last scenario, when you had nine bees and four of them would have left, which was half rounded down, this would be a strength four hive. Um, that is swarming. Uh, we will cover other topics of this game, uh, likely queens next, in future videos of bee lives. We will only know summer.